morning, everybody from Turkey and good night uh, in the United States. Uh, I will talk about the white metal tracks of the cerebrum. Uh, we know all co cortical uh, eloquent areas and the vessels, but now we know uh, underlying it, there is a complex white matter network under it, uh, them. It was simple before, but we know uh, it is more complex than before. For example, uh, this hours is related with the language and not only the uh, non dominant hemisphere, but also non dominant hemisphere. There are some regions related with the language. And to determine these areas, uh, we have some techniques. For example, uh, functional MR, tractography, and intraoperative direct stimulation. But most of these techniques uh, is not important if you know the anatomy. For example, for ventricle, ventricular tumors, you, if you know the anatomy of the white matter tracts, you don't need the uh, functional MRR and intraoperative direct uh, stimulation and tractography. Uh, we have some techniques to show what matter tracks. For example, uh, fiber dissection and to show their relationship to ventricles, transformation techniques and tractography. You must know the surface anatomy uh, and the ventricle uh, to know uh, location of the all tracks. Firstly, you must know the ventricle location, frontal horn, corresponds to pars triangularis and pars operacularis. Body corresponds to placental and postcentral gyro, atrium and occipital horn, supramarginal gyrus and posterior part of the temporal gyrus and anterior part of the occipital lobe. And the temporal horn uh, corresponds the anterior and mid part of the middle temporal gyrus. And as you see, they are uh, covered by the white metal tracks. Firstly, uh, when you can see the U fibers after decortication, they connect the nerve uh, gyra. Then, after removing the U fibers, you can see super longitudinal fascicle two and three. Two connects to pars triangularis and angular gyrus to the uh, anterior part of the frontal gyrus. Sorry. As you see, super longitudinal fascicle two, and you can see the tree, it connects the supramarginal gyrus and the pars operacularis and pars uh, triangularis. And you can see the their relationship with the ventricle. And you can see from the superior, sorry. You can see from the superior and the next fibers, uh, it is the most known fibers from the everybody arcade fasciculus. It connects the uh, frontal lobe to the temporal lobe. And it relates with the language. And you can see the day relation, its relationship, the ventricles. And is uh, related cortical areas, you can see frontal lobe, pars triangularis, pars operacularis to the anterior part of the temporal gyro. 
we can see from the superior to aqua atrocules and its relationship to ventricles. And you can see it is uh, lying lateral to the uh, ventricle. The next fibers connecting with the superior temporal gyrus to the angular gyrus, middle longitudinal fasciculus. You can see its relationship to the ventricles, atrium, and the temporal horn. And you can see its cortical relationships with the superior temporal gyrus and the angular gyrus. And when we see from the superior, you can see middle longitudinal fasciculus and its relationship to ventricles and its cortical relationship. And inferior frontal occipital fasciculus connect frontal lobe to the occipital lobe through the insula. You can see inferior frontal occipital fasciculus, uncinate fasciculus, and then under the uh, temporal lobe, inferior longitudinal fasciculus. You can see their relationship with the ventricles. And the cortical relationship. And from the inferior view, you can see the inferior longitudinal fasciculus located lateral to the ventricles. And anterior commissure, when you remove the uh, IFOF, you can see anterior commissure, and you can see tractography of the anterior commissure and the relationship, the uh, cortical structure. When we look from the superior, you can see anterior commissure and their temporal and occipital extensions. and uh, its cortical uh, relationships. And after removing the uh, posterior part of the anterior commissure, you can see the optic radiation uh, emerging from the lateral genicular body and merized loop then to the occipital loop. And its relationship, the ventricles and the tractography and you can see that there it's cortical uh, relationship. And when we look from spur, you can see the optic radiation covering the lateral part of the atrium and temporal gyro. And when we look to uh, inferior, you can see the optic radiation covering the lateral uh, wall of the atrium and the temporal horn tractography and you can see the cortical relationship. And from the medial side, uh, we have square longitudinal fasciculus one connecting the preacuneus to the anterior part of the frontal lobe and the cingulum connected to frontal to the temporal lobe and the relationship with the ventricles and the, the relationship with the cortical areas. When we look to uh, superior, you can see the cingulum and the superior longitudinal fascicular connecting the preacuneus to the frontal lobe. And uncinat fasciculus connects the frontal lobe to the temporal lobe, just under the inferior front occipital fasciculus. And you can see the phonics connects the interlimbic inter gyrus to the uh, mammillary body and the septal area. From superior, you can see uncinate fasciculus and the fornix. And corpus, corpus callosum is the major commissure fibers of the cerebrum and it connects the most part of the cerebrum and it has parts, forceps, Major connects the both occipital lobe forceps, minor connects both frontal lobes, and tapetum covers the lateral wall of the ventricles. And from the superior view, 
also it has uh, different parts from connect to superior parts of the uh, cortex and connects caudal nuclei. And you can see the capital fibers, forceps minor and forceps major. And its relationship with the ventricles, it covers uh, upper wall and middle wall of the ventricles and also lateral wall of the ventricles. And cortical spinal tract and thalamic graduation. And uh, we described some of the uh, approach to the ventricles. And if you know the anatomy, you don't need most of the time the uh, tractography and intraoperative uh, direct stimulation and functional MRI because you can know and uh, these all tracks. You can see all these data from these uh, manuscripts. And uh, I want to thank uh, Professor Tu and Rashagir to have it, to get a chance to give you a chance to work with them. And I am working in the Red Tepe Neurosurgery Laboratory with my fellows. And also I am uh, still studying for, for my cases. And I, I am doing uh, goodbye parties to my fellows as a tradition of the Professor Roton. And I want to thank uh, Pamir Tanova and uh, to my previous former fellows. And I'm lucky because uh, I had a chance to meet uh, legends and I'm part of the big family. Thank you, Professor Roton. And thank you for listening.